Hi, welcome back everyone, me Robert here. As you guys know, JSON pairs can be very simple and contain just key value pairs, like in this example, that we received from the YouTube API in one of my previous videos, how to make HTTP requests to external APIs. On the other hand, JSON strings can also be very complex, like in this example, where the JSON key book contains an array of further JSON objects. In this video, I will show you how you can get the values of properties in such nested structures. We will build a JSON path class that's comparable with JSON path that you might know from other programming languages. For example, this command will get you the title of the second book in this JSON string. In this example, you can see that you will be able to query the JSON string through a static class method by providing the JSON string and the query string at once. But additionally, you will also be able to instantiate an object of this class and to initially set the JSON string. And then you can request multiple properties from this object. So we will start coding this class in a second. But before that, consider giving a like and subscribe and also smash that notification bell below so you guys can keep up to date for all of our videos. Now without further ado, let's get to it! Okay, as always, let's start with a live demo. I've prepared two classes for you. The first one is the test class, which allows us to make some JSON path queries. And the second one is the JSON path class here, which actually does the heavy lifting. But let's start with the test class here and run some tests. The test class implements the class runner interface here, so we can output the results to the console here below. In the first test method, we create a simple JSON string here. Then we instantiate an object of our JSON path class. Then we set the JSON string here in this object. You can see that this JSON string variable contains this content here. And here we make a get request to the JSON path object and we query the property title here. The JSON string contains two properties, the title and the author name. So with this query, we expect to receive the title, which is this string here. Now let's press F9 to run this test. And here in the ABAP console, at the bottom of this page, you can see that we received the correct response, Cloud Foundry environment in SAP PTP free setup full guide. So now let's deactivate this first test and activate the second. The second test covers a little bit more complex JSON string. You can see that the first property bookstore is a simple key value pair. However, the second property address contains another JSON object here. We instantiate our JSON path class here again and we set the JSON string again. And here you can see that we query the address property. So we expect to receive this full JSON object here as a string. So first let's clear the ABAP console here at the bottom of this window and then run this test with F9 again. Again you can see that we have received the correct response here. Now let's activate test 3. Test 3 has the same JSON string here. However, this time we want to request multiple properties. We request the bookstore property here, which is this one. Then we want the street property, which is part of the address property here. So this query should give us 900 Lombard Street here. And additionally, we want to get the title of the second element in the book array. Please note that in the JSON path syntax, one corresponds to the second element in an array and that zero would be the first element in an array. So this might be confusing for traditional ABAP developers. However, I decided to stick with the JSON path specification here. So with this query here, we should get the second book 
of the book property here, which basically is this one here, French book. And we will output these properties with this string here. You can get the book at this street in this bookstore. So let's clean the ABAP console here again and then press F9 to run this test. And you actually can see that the response string here is you can get the book, French book, at 900 Lambert Street in my bookstore. So this appears to be correct as well. So let's move forward with the test number four. I activate test number four here. In comparison to the other tests, in this test, we use a static class method to set the JSON string and to query a property at once. So with this approach, you don't have to instantiate an object first. As you can see here, you can use this static class method simply by using the name of the class and then calling this query method. As arguments, we provide the JSON string here and the query string, which contains the property that we want to request. Now let's press F9 again. And you can see that the correct response is here French book again. But now let's have a look into my JSON path class, which does the heavy lifting. In the definition of the JSON path class, you can see that this class has two public methods, set and get. The set method allows you to set the JSON string. The get method takes the query string as an argument and it returns the requested value. So these two methods you need if you want to instantiate an object of the JSON path class. On the other hand, if you want to do the query through a static class method, you can use the query method here which is defined as a static class method here. And this method takes the JSON string and the query strings as arguments. And it also returns the requested value here. Unlike these public methods here, that are visible from outside the class, which you can call from outside of this class, I've developed further protected methods which are visible only within this class. So I call them from these public methods, but they cannot be called directly from outside these public methods. The class also has a private section, which basically holds the private attributes of this class. And these private attributes are the JSON string and the query string. So if you remember from the tests before, the JSON string basically is this one here, for example, and the query string, for example, is this one here. Then we have a private query parts argument. This query parts argument basically is a table of strings, which holds the substrings of the query string here that I split by the dots. So for example, this query string here would be separated by the dots into three substrings. The first one is dollar, the second one is book, parenthesis one, and the third one is title. And as you will see in the code later, each of these substrings will get a row in this query parts table. Then we have an ABAP object here which basically is a representation of this JSON string as ABAP object. This ABAP object is created when you call the public set method. Additionally, I have an ABAP worker object here, which basically is a copy of the ABAP object. However, this ABAP work worker object gets changed during the processing. But now let's look into the implementation of the public methods. So first let's look into the set method, which is quite simple. First we set the past JSON string here, and then we create an ABAP object of this JSON string here. As you can see here, I use this generate method from the UI2 CLJSON class for this purpose. This class is already available in your ABAP environment, 
and additionally it's available as an open source project. However, please note that I do not use the serialize method of this class, instead I use the generate method of this class, since my JSON path class needs to be able to handle untyped JSON strings, which basically are JSON strings with an unknown structure. Next, let's have a look into the get method here. The set method sets the query string here. For this purpose, I've created this setter method that, as you can see here, splits the query string into substrings separated by dots and inserts it into the table query parts. So now we are back here in the get method and here we set the ABAP worker object which basically is a copy of the ABAP object that has been set in the set method. Next, if the ABAP worker object is bound, then we loop over the query parts here and we are assigning them to the field symbol query part, which is defined here. So in our test sample, the first query part would be the dollar symbol here. The second query part would be this string here and the third query part would be this string here. As you can see here, if the query part is the dollar sign, then we continue the loop, which basically means that we skip this dollar query part. So actually you even wouldn't have to provide it here at all. However, through this loop, we can iterate even through very complex queries here. Next, we assign the ABAP worker object to the data field symbol, which is defined here of type data. Next, we extract the property from the query part. For this purpose, I've created the internal method get property from query part. As you can see here, the query part book parenthesis one and parenthesis, for example, does not contain just the property book. So we have to remove these parenthesis here first. And that's exactly what this method does to get just the book property. Then we can assign the component, in our case, it, this would be book of structure data, which is the field symbol here, to field, which also is the field symbol here of type any. If the field has been assigned successfully, then it contains the value of this property. In our case, this property is book now. So if we look back to our test case, then the field would contain the array with all the books here. And here we assign the field to our private ABAP worker object. Then we check if the query part is just a simple property, like for example here, the bookstore, or if it's an array element, like here in the book property, that contains further JSON objects. When it's just a simple property, then we format the ABAP worker object for output here, which basically is a string format and we assign it to the return value. However, this does not necessarily mean that we output this return value. Since we continue to iterate in this loop, if an additional query string is available, as you can see here, for example. However, if we just have one query part, like in this example here, then we would exit the loop here and output the value. On the other hand, if the query part is an array element, then things get a little bit more complicated and we call another method find and set array element. In the find and set array element method, we assign the current ABAP worker object to the data field symbol. Then we get the index of the requested array. In our book example, this would be one here. Then we loop through all lines of the upper representation of this array. And if we find the requested element here, which has the right index, then we assign this line to our ABAP worker object again. 
With this approach, we reduce the whole ABAP worker object to just the found element. So in our book example, this would be just the second JSON book object here. However, in this case, we would not finish here, but we would loop for another property, which is the title. So when we come back from the find and set array element method, the code would not stop here, but do another iteration. In the next iteration, the query part would not be an array element anymore, but the next time it would be a property, as you can see here with the title. And eventually the code would get the title here in this second JSON object. And this title is French book. Okay, this was just a quick code run through. Of course, I could not cover all methods that I've created. However, I hope this was useful for you and you could follow along. You can find a link to my code in the description below. So if you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.